The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Thursday, uh, June the 20th. And we're looking at the Dow up 131 and 38,967. So, one of the things I was looking at over the weekend was. And I mentioned this to subscribe to my opening call uh, newsletter. Oh, it wasn't a weekend. It was just yesterday. It just felt like a weekend because there was just so much going on. So uh, what I was looking at is, mm, I wonder if I can do it over here. Yeah, I'll do it over here. So this is what I show subscribers every day. This is every market day. This is the Dow. This is a daily chart on the left. In the middle is the daily chart of the Dow. On the right is the 120-minute chart. And what I show every single day, whenever I send out my newsletter, I always show the Dow chart. And what the, what this has is on the left, it has the pink nine-period moving average and the black 14-period moving average. It also has a very faint kind of pinkish color, 20-period moving average. Those are the only moving averages it has. But it also has Chapman Wave notations. It has Chapman Wave <clears throat> um, Let me just move this over here. But it doesn't have the MACD and stochastic. That's the one in the middle here. And this one also has Chapman Wave automated, uh, res Chapman Wave resistance levels and support levels. That's automatic. It's based on the MACD and stochastic that uh, the late Herb Brun did for me. Um, and that that shows you right here that there are a couple of resistance points just above 39,097 and higher than that. And key support is way down at 37,862. But it shows you, and this is the thing that was impressive to me, was that the histogram, this is the vertical lines of the MACD, were starting to improve. They hadn't gone positive, but they were improving. And uh, right here uh, today, they actually crossed positive. But the 9-14 period moving averages, that, hasn't, that has not turned positive yet. It's still pink. And it'll go green when it crosses positive. The stochastic's still only down to the 66% level. And the on-balance volume has rallied nicely. So there's a lot missing. We remain short from the high that was made the day of the 20th of, oh, exactly a month ago, 20th of May. Uh, the day it hit an all-time high of 40,077. But a longer term, we, we have no intention of changing our long-term long positions because the monthly charts point to higher prices. But you have got a leg C in the 120-minute chart with very good technicals, um, and it's just gone above the 200-period moving average for the first time since it broke out on the, uh, the 12th. It spiked up higher, the 12th of, uh, of June. It has a spike above the 200 period moving average. So this is a positive. Um, within the context of, let me just show you this right here. Look at, within the context of trends, look at this. This is the, the Dow right here. See, it's weak. Has got a green candle on the weekly chart, but it's going to be mostly red. Green candle all-time high in the S&P. Green candle weekly chart on the NDX 100. Uh, green candle on the SMHs, all-time highs. All three of these are all-time highs. And the IWM has been red, but it has a green candle for this particular week. We've still got another day and a half to go. So you can see that the tech sector is really, it's been not only on a tear, but it, is, it has led the general market, the consensus of the general market to the upside. Now, within that context, I just want you to go through this right here. I wanted to show you before we get into the nitty gritties of what is possible over the next few sessions. Um, this is this is to me kind of important. The Dow has been stuck in a range. It hasn't even gone above that high that was made in the 39,000s about four or five sessions ago, about a week and a half ago. The IWM, the Russell 2000, is stuck in the lower range with the pink nine period moving average making lower lows and lower highs. The IWB, and this is the 1000, this is the Russell 1000 ETF, is 
It was making all-time highs. And uh, then it stalled just a little bit for that peak C. And now it's gone to a leg D. Now this is going to be very interesting. Based on Chapman Wave methodology, let me go through this one at a time. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to sort out, this is for me as well as for you, how on earth, when there is so much strength at all-time highs in not just one but a number of sectors but all related to tech, um, how on earth, what would... What would give you that 8 to 10% pullback in the general market? Not just the Dow, but the general market. Well, let's just go one at a time. All-time high in the Russell 1000. It's so fascinating. The 1000, which it must have a predominance of what maybe some, I'm not sure what the predominance is, because if you're looking at the small bank stocks, well, that would be the KRE. And the KRE is the regional bank index, and that is just looking terrible on the daily chart. Weekly chart is just stuck in a, in a rectangle in the lower range and having been re repelled from the 200 period moving average in the 52s. Here it is at 47. And the monthly chart is just going nowhere. It's just going sideways. And the XLF itself, which is the S&P Financial uh, Select Spider Fund, um, has had a bit of a pullback from that 42, 49. What I'd said is it's an all-time high at a peak C. It's really unusual to get a sharp pullback, um, but it does happen once in a while. And everything about the characteristic of that peak C, I said at 42, 49 on May the 20th, everything about it looked like it was a D. So other than that, it's acted like a D. And this says, no, nah, nah, nah. you couldn't count it any other way. It is a, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, because it took out the starting point of, let me show you right here, the 39.53 low of the 17th of April. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, look at that. It took out what I considered an alternate count. Oh, maybe I could do that. I didn't realize. 39.32, 39.53, it held it. Oh. Ah. I didn't do that work. I should have done that homework. This is a G slash C. That's why I use alternate counts. In this case, I normally do, and I didn't. And it, it fooled me. I said it looks like an all-time high at a peak D, and it's pulling back. I'm calling it at least for now. It looks like a G. So that just says you've got a D in the weekly chart, leg C in the monthly chart, still very positive. Uh, but you start to roll over a little bit, certainly in the daily and the weekly. Now, that's really important. The reason why I wanted to put the little package together is that the financials are very, very important. In this particular part, the phase, with, um, and you've had the same thing in the JP Morgan, made an all-time high at 205.88 back in mid-May. And I said, you know, something about this, just everything about it with the reversal with a disappointment, I, was that Jamie Dimon saying whatever it was, it was a disappointment. And if that's the case, oh, let me just do this for the moment here, if you don't mind taking the time to do it. That was the low at 178.16, and that was the uh, Chamway instant start on the 20th of February at 178. And we went 179. Okay, I'm giving it an alternate count again. I'm giving it a G slash, it does not say it has to be, but I just like to have my little ducks in order to say, hey, if that's my methodology, stick to the methodology and let it go wherever it is going to go. I'll be back. Dow's up 128, SMB's up 4. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So I'm, I'm back at Jack, JP Morgan. Yep. All of these have shown signs that they have at least on their daily charts started a pullback. Uh, the weekly charts, eh, they're still really good, but they do have peak Ds, most of them. I wanted to do this real quickly. NVIDIA. So NVIDIA turned uh, from 140.76. Oh, it had a 140 round number high. Then it squeaked to 140.76. Oh, that's not fair. Uh, you remember, we got those major sell signals where all of these semiconductors were having round numbers and some other major tech stocks were having round numbers back in April, May, whenever it was. Uh, March, April. Yeah. And then what happened? They pull back very sharply. So NVIDIA right now um, is trading at 136.80. It's up only 1.2 to only because it was up much more. It was at the 140.76 level. So it's given back five points just really quickly. I had said to subscribers that we are preparing for some kind of a pullback. But there's only one way I can do it at this particular point. And I don't want to get in the way. I'm just going to let that play out. But you've got a leg D in the SMHs. You've got a leg E in uh, NVIDIA. You've got uh, MU. Micron is in leg D, uh, maybe making a PD. Very sharp pullback today, a reversal. It hit 157.41. 157.01 was the open, almost a round number. And now it's at 148.31. If you're looking at... Um, Let's go. We can, uh, you can do them all. LRCX, uh, LAM Research, uh, Leg E, probably a peak E today. All of these are suggesting the, in the Champion Wave methodology that some kind of a pullback is going to occur. And I'd said I wouldn't be surprised if early next week we do get a we do get a pullback. But the big question here is: so now do we rotate? So we get some kind of tech uh, di digestive uh, week or two, and then. All of a sudden, what have, you, what have you got? You've got the Dow suddenly acting really nicely on the day anyway. It's up 167 at 39.002. And that's probably because of some of the, uh, just a couple of the, what is Caterpillar now having a decent re a rally? Uh, Caterpillar is up 3.65. Uh, well, it's in the Dow. And it's had a pretty decent pullback peak D in the weekly chart. And here it is up 3.65. Well, it's just trying to turn around a little bit. So I want to do so in the, in the den. Uh, a couple of people have, have talked, has, um, posted or 
suggested looking at, so we've got AN, which is um, right here, ordination. Yeah, I don't have any notation whatsoever here. I have notated this for, I don't know, forever. I've followed the guy, the CEO, whatever his name is. He's very good. And I've followed him for years. And he's also pretty straightforward. I've always found him to be pretty straightforward. So look at this. Uh, you've run up very nicely. You made a high back in January, I think. It was, no, July of 2023 at 162.08, 182.08. Come down sharply to the 120s, had a nice rebound. And then under 180, we've started to stall. So uh, this is alternation. So alternation always for me is a bit of a tell on, on you know, the, the – um, Order industry, and that's just saying that big spike to 178.13 on the 26th of April. We've been stuck in the range, and now we're testing the low of the 1st of May, which is at 160.28. Yeah, we are with a low today of 160.22. Look at Tesla. Tesla is trading back in the rectangle formation. It's just been stuck in that rectangle. Remember, a rectangle, a narrow rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patients. CVNA, we looked at it the other day, and I said, ooh, uh, this is just stuck in a range. It's actually holding. looks a little bit um, like the uh, the weekly is holding the nine-period moving average after that peak E. The daily is just today flipped to green in, in the... Uh, yeah, 9.14 at 110.45, down 33 cents. And the other one I want to look at, we looked at uh, Toyota Motors the other day. Look at this. At the low, most recent lows, this is that Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down from that uh, double top right there in April uh, in the 250s. And here it is at 193, peak D in the monthly chart. I have to tell you, this is a very, if you're in the, if you're in the areas that have been doing well up until now, uh, you just you kind of patted yourself on the back and said, oh, this is going to end, but this is fantastic, right? I mean, we've had Microsoft, this is in that category. I'm looking at Microsoft, and I think it's giving me a, a signal to say, I'm getting ready for some kind of a pullback. So GE right now is down 21 cents, up in the higher range, but not making a high above the 170.80 high of early May. And it's only at 164.87. It's not a big deal. It has been down to the 154 level, but it's a nice rebound holding okay. So let me show you something really interesting. Um, within, look, SMCI. There we go. Super, this is Super Micro Company, Service Solutions Architecture A1. Spikes up very sharp. Moved 61 points at 981. It hit 1014.02 today. Um, had a 1229.00 round number high back in the week of the 8th of March. I tumbled down to 700 round number low. This is pretty decent action, but it's still off its all-time high. So I've got to watch it closely. Now, I mentioned Microsoft, so let me look, show you what I'm looking at. So Microsoft is down 35 at 442.76. There are so many signs with this peak B right here that says, you know, I try to count it uh, this way and that way and whatever way it is. I couldn't get it to be uh, in a notation higher than a, a B right now because it went to a G. There's never an H. So that G slash A goes to a B. So all I'm saying is that I'm watching this closely. To me, there's a whole, this is a benchmark right now. Why is it a benchmark? Because you've got the Chan Wave Stalk Leg Formation, and I believe that we're going to make a peak E. This is a leg E right now. 450.94 was the high three days ago. And this is the pattern we're looking at, the Chan Wave Stalk Leg Formation. L leg, body, neck, and then you get the beak. We haven't started the beak in the weekly charts. So I'm watching this very closely. There are a lot of signs hinting to say, it doesn't matter what you're looking at in terms of everything that's working fantastically. There are some signs that say one of three things is going to happen in the next two weeks. Number one, the possibility that the Dow forms a base and that you see a rotation in all this whole tech sector. And it's just a rotation that says it's a, it's a, a nominal correction, just a kind of a breather before it starts another big move up. 
And that means if the Dow forms some kind of a base and it actually rallies quite nicely, you should see the Russell 2000 IWM. That's number one, scenario number one. Number two is, and I have to say, Stan Harley has just been fabulous for the last couple of years. He's just really nailed it with all these, with these Lucas numbers, etc. But what's really fascinating to some of us, and I always like to say, you can use whatever technique you, you want. It's how it's interpreted. And in this particular case, the lows that he anticipated were higher, mostly higher lows. Is that just the case? That I think that they said, I think he said that we the 24th, somewhere in the 24th, there should be another low. And then that should be a move, a spectacular move to the outside. And I'm trying to put this together. So that's scenario two. I'll talk about three as soon as I return. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. So uh, let me just do this uh, quickly because uh, before I forget, HGX, the HGX is the uh, 
This is the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index. Peak D in the monthly chart, peak E in the weekly chart, a peak D up at the high of 730, uh, just over 730 back in May, and now it's trading at 682. Not a big deal. See, uh, 676. Not a big deal, but it has been coming down. And then you had the housing report this morning. That was very disappointing, but actually things are holding well. So let me just put this into perspective. What I want you to talk about, and I think that this uh, this pertains to um, this pertains to cycles, time lapses, everything that that you can do in terms of the time uh, aspect. But it also uh, deals with. Uh, price. So let me just go just for the moment. I want to do this here. I'm going to go to the uh, I wanted. There we go. So this is the using the uh, 914 period moving averages goes pink when it's negative under the, the the nine goes under the 14 turns pink and it goes green when it's positive. So just this it just happens as I picked it up. GE. So GE we flipped to to green. Back to green today, it's holding really well at all-time highs. So this is what I wanted to say. So there were two two scenarios. One is that there is a bit of a pullback in the tech sector, and the Dow starts to move higher. And it should, if it does that, and I really, when I say higher, it's showing at 38,962. It really needs to get to the 39,250s. And then I'm going to say, ah, now we've got to change back to positive. In the meantime, it's still uh, working very hard to, to hold the gains. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. And this is just a daily chart. The, the weekly charts, I've been talking about this for some time. They are fabulous. They're all looking great. So here's the Dow. Um, it's in this trading range. It's gone pink and has been that way for a little while. That's negative. And it is close to turning green, but it hasn't turned green yet. Here's the S&P. And the S&P is just steadily climbing higher and higher. It almost turned down the other day, but it refused. And it went even higher to today's uh, all-time high. Nicely over the green nine period moving average, which is nicely over the black 14. This is a daily chart. Look at the S&P. I'll just go to the SPY. It's a little easier. SPY right now trading up uh, 78 cents at 549.28. Same thing. Even on the dip, most recent dip in um, late May, early June, the the green nine period moving average refused to even think about turning pink. It stayed green, and that's a positive. Look at the QQQ. Look at that. The first time we're flattening a little bit. Uh, it's down 22 cents at 484. It hit a record today of 486.84, and it's still way above. To get these things to go negative, you're going to have to. I mean, for the um, Qs, you'd have to be at 461. You're 461, it's, it's over 20 points lower, right? For the IWM to turn positive, it's going to take, it's at 2134, it's pink. If, if it needs to turn positive, it'll have to go to, to at least 204.50. It's another three, at least three and a half points or three points higher. Um, if you're looking at the uh, SMHs, so this is the reason why I'm saying sometimes you, when price breaks to the upside, it is so powerful that it says, if I'm having a digestive phase, I'm just having, a, like in this case, which called short-term daily digestive phase. For the weekly charts, look what you have to do for the weekly chart. I'll, I'll go to the weekly charts. No, I'll do it right here. I'll just change this to weekly. And look at this. Look at that extension. Now, that is very overbought. Uh, visually and in price, and if you had a look at percentages, that is the SMH's weekly chart. That is very overbought. But so what? Comes back from 275 to 236. Comes back to just a couple of uh, in a, a week or two earlier, and there it is. If you look at the QQQ, it's the same thing. It's getting to an overbought level. The percentage that it is above the 14-period moving average this is the highest it's been for a long time. And it says, hey, just on a purely visual basis, let alone percentage basis, this should have a, p a bit of a pullback. So I want you to give you that scenario that I'm looking at that says um, for the monthly charts, I uh, didn't mean to do that, I'm going to go here. For the monthly charts, look how important it is. You've got, so HGX is going sideways as the Philadelphia Housing Index. So let's look at this. So the SMHs, 
that's leg D. Leg D in the Chapman Way methodology is where you say, uh oh, be a little careful here because yellow light flashes for a moment. It doesn't mean to say you go short or anything, it just says, just for the moment, let's see how we get through leg D. Well, we're in leg D in the daily, we're leg F slash C in the weekly chart. And all I'm saying is, when I do the analysis on the shorter term basis, we had a lot of 120 minute charts and et cetera that said, hey, there should be a pullback, and there's been no pullback. But having this kind of consistent move to the upside says, if there is a pullback, how would it unfold? Now, I'm not going to into Stan Hawley's work because he does his own, own work and he's been great up to now. Although, I must admit, I, I got a feeling that some of the pullbacks, even the one that he said from the last pullback to the one coming up, which is quite a bit higher than the previous one, um, I, I don't know how he's going to interpret that. But it can happen when he's got his cycle date. It doesn't matter if it's going high. It means that's the cycle date. That's the way I have to interpret it. And with other people, you can get an inversion of that particular day. He has a different thing for for lows and a different thing for highs. I'm using him only because he's been so good. I always admire and I respect people who do really good work. And I tend to look at them to say, what are they saying? How does it connect to my work? Is there any relationship? Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. In my work here, it's saying there is an overbought condition in the semis, the Qs, uh, XLK, XLK, here we go, um, that says there should be a, a bit of a pullback starting in the, obviously starting in the daily chart, but it's going to take a great deal to really impact the weekly charts. Okay, I got that out the way. So I say to you, number one is, there's a pullback, but the Dow holds. Number two is there's a pullback. The Dow doesn't hold. The IWM doesn't hold. They all go down together. If they all go down together, then I'm thinking 8 to 10% correction. But there's a, the, the scenario that says, wait a minute. What if we're going to go into this mega move to the upside? And I don't see that now. Why? Because my IAI, the uh, iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF, is kind of stalling in the daily chart. Not so much in the weekly chart, but in the daily chart. And it's just suggesting that there should be some kind of a pullback there. The XLF, that's the financials, stalling a little bit. There should be some further pullback. And when I put the thing together, it says, I don't know if we're ready for a break to the upside, but we could see some a continuation of a rotation that now takes other sectors and the strongest becomes weaker and the weaker becomes stronger. I'll be back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? 
Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Right, just let me do this before I uh, run out of time. So Diamondback Energy Fang is a symbol FANG up 255 at 191.92. Look at these series of troughs, beautiful V-shaped with the right side lower than the left side, making a right here, chat wave inside track. Let me just do this right there. It is, and I'll lift this up. I don't know if I need to even put in two tracks to make an inside track. Here we go. There it is. So you've got your high right there, and it just touches the outer bands. So, uh, Fang trading at uh, 191.35. Uh, 42 actually look it just keeps making a trough a trough b trough c trough d e and oh by a fraction let's see 185.10 and 185.10 double bottom so that's um that's that's not a new low that's that's the low over there so yes this is acting quite nicely and i've got this very nice channel in the weekly chart Right here, that's the one that we were looking at in the daily, but it extends very nicely to the uh, there. So, okay, it's saying that the 185.10 is pretty serious in the dreaded H pattern support. Um, it's a very nice two candle gap up on Tuesday and uh, and rallying quite nicely today, hit 192.45 to really change the character it needs to trade I have to give it quite a bit 196.50 it has to close at 196.50 that's only 5 points up it's not a big deal if this is changing character so the question is energy seems to be doing okay today and the crude oil is moving nicely this crude oil leg B, A, B, leg C and the daily chart but the weekly chart says it's kind of stuck in healthy Inside track support level. Yeah, so let's look at the XLE. It's the same thing. I, uh, yeah, the same thing as the um, FANG. Lower lows and lower lows, lower highs. And now it's all of a sudden trying to bounce. I think it's a work in progress. It's trying to form some kind of a base. I'm just going to say, um, question was on FANG. And I'm going to say, it's worth giving it a try on the long side. There's a lot that has to be. Look, the MACD is weak. The relative strength is weak. The stochastic is very weak. The on-balance volume is weak. The MACD um, is trying to turn positive, but it hasn't, and it's kind of flat. The 914 is pink. It's, it's weak. I'm, I'm just going to suggest if you want to start just a little bit, a touch, you could just start your position here at 191.51. I'd much rather be buying higher highs and higher lows to get that trend change. We have, we've got lower lows and lower highs. So st if, you, if you're interested, if you've done your homework, you like it, start a position here at 191.51, but it shouldn't be a big position. Why? Because I'd rather be adding on higher highs and higher lows with peaks rather than troughs. Downside lows, I'd rather have upside peaks. Another question was oxy. Oxy is Occidental Petroleum. Now, this is a little different chart. You see, this has already made the turn. The, the uh, FANG made us 
they're different, of course. Oxy is a multinational oil, and Fang is in the uh, um, the oil service sector. So what we're looking at here is peak A, peak B. This is a leg C. First time it's touched the 200 period moving average in about a week and a half. This is a slightly different one, but this. Why do I not have my notations here? What the heck happened? Anyway, I'm not complaining. I can do it in a split second. This is peak A, peak B, C, uh, D, E, and then it's gone sideways. It looks more like a cup formation. Um, uh, it's kind of stalling in the monthly chart. It needs a lot of work. So Oxy is a better chart, both daily and weekly, but it also needs quite a bit of work. I just need to do Exxon because I want to put apples to apples. Yeah, Exxon's being the stronger one, certainly in the monthly chart, uh, not so much the weekly and not so much the daily. So in that case, in in this particular instance, I think Oxy actually is a better chart. Um, I hope that helps you. So the other thing is just to to confirm what would be the stop on Fang. Would I have a stop, or is this something to buy and just say, you know, it's had a decent pullback. Uh, the monthly chart looks still, still looks very good. I just want to buy this and hold it. I'm not in the buy and hold in this particular instance. I'm going to say. I would have a stop if I had a small position. Today's low is 189.51. I'd give it room. I'd give it under the candle, the doji candle low of Tuesday. So I'd go 180, 188.21. That's three points. That's not a big deal. Yeah, one, one, 188. If it closes under 188, give me a yell. We'll look at it together. But I would say that's where I'd probably... I'd even even if I've got a small position, I take something off at that level. It needs to work. It needs to work really quickly, and the technicals are not uh, as good as they should be. All right. I hope that helped you. Next question came in. Where was it? I saw it just a moment ago. Uh, oh, oh, that's right. I did that. I did that. And oh, FXI, FXI, starting a little bit of a turn to the upside. But I think it still has work to do at 26.80. This is the iShares China large cap ETF. Look, it's making kind of making a, a U-shaped pattern attempt in the they are in the daily chart. But the weekly chart says there's nothing really wrong here. It's a bit too steep for the peak C from the 29s down to the 26s. But it, it's holding the 9 above the 9, actually. And the 9 is above the 14. So that's a good sign. And the... Monthly chart is uh, not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. So FXI, all I'm going to say, 2681 right now. Um, over the next four sessions, going into next week, that is, the low that was made on the 14th of June at 2611, I don't want to see it close under 26. If you're long and waiting for a bounce or you've been holding all this time because you got in, I know that you did get in uh, way back in the 21s at one point. So, yeah. If you're still long, that's fine. But uh, a little whittling away was not a bad thing. I think I spoke about that as we're going to peak F. I said, I think it's a little toppy. So if you're long, take a little bit off. I wouldn't be putting back just yet. Let's look at it again, maybe on Monday, and we'll see if it's able to get to the 2735 area. And then I'll say, hey, now it's ready. Uh, next question came in. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, right here. So this is Thursday. Yes, I, I meant to do this. Look, gold. The gold is up 29. It's up almost $30. So what's what's going on here? Gold is up strongly. This is a new leg B. And we tried to buy a silver stock today, um, one we've actually had before. Haven't, haven't got it. it. Didn't pull back. I wanted I, – I was doing two things. I was saying – one is I'm going to make a split position. I want it now with a little gap up at the open, and then I want it lower down. Then I thought, you know, I don't know if I really want to do that, just in case I get the position, and then it closes at the low, and then it goes even low, because that would be actually negative action. But now look at silver. Funnily enough, look, the silver chart is good because it's going to the top of the range of the, of the down channel, the declining channel, going to the inside track, let me let me just do this change color green. This one's going to be pink. Oh, sessions. Yeah, let's go right to the inside track. We fell into. You know, I I'm impressed with with silver. I think silver's doing really nicely. Maybe in a way a little bit better than gold. So, um, now congratulations, closing your CVNA puts. Very nice. 
So I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, time for Houston's hour. Dow's up 62, S&P's up 6. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So let me just sum this up. Uh, for subscribers of Open Call, we've raised cash. We've raised quite a bit of cash and have some of the fewest positions we've had in a long time. Fortunately, the positions we have are doing nicely. Some are making all-time highs. But I'm looking at this and everything about what I'm looking at and all the work I did over the last week and a half is suggesting that there is an overbought situation, purely visual and technical. I'm, I'm very visual, but technical. And because, and I know Tom and Tommy just articulated really well the whole thing that's going on, on with the XLK uh, and, and the uh, what has to be done to to get uh, a certain percentage, an equal equalization uh, between some of the really big caps uh, and some of ex are excessive and some are not. NVIDIA is included in this round. And my, my guess over the period of time that I've been watching markets is that when there's this crazy event coming up, it turns out to be a lot more benign and it actually has a response different to what one would anticipate. So all I'm saying is that the XLK, regardless of what is supposed to be going on, is in a situation that says it is somewhat overbought and it should have a bit of a digestive phase. And it might take a little bit of time. It might be a sudden move. I don't know. But that's what I'm anticipating. That's number one. Number two is if markets do digest gains, the sectors that have been the best, and if that usually stock splits, all of these are signs to say, hey, 
very often that's very close to some kind of a, I call it a digestive phase. I'm not saying a massive turn down. I'm just saying some kind of a breather, right? A well-deserved breather. So all I'm looking at is if by the end of the day for the Dow, if the Dow is only up maybe 50, if, if less than 50 points after a 145, let's call it 2 o'clock, and the S&P is actually down, that's going to say, hey, just be careful of the close. It's not a big deal, but I think we could be pulling back. But what we're looking at right now is that there's so much activity going on. There's so much noise that to filter it out, you actually do have to see the semiconductors drop seven to eight points in the next couple.